you can add clairvoyance to the list of Wendell Berry's many talents. Eleven years ago, in an essay for Orion magazine, he wrote, if we make the world too toxic for honeybees, some compound brain, Monsanto perhaps, will invent tiny robots that will fly about pollinating flowers and making honey. Well, believe it or not, this spring, Harvard University announced the first successful controlled flight of a robo-bee, one that could take the place of real bees and natural pollination. It would be funny if it were not so sad. This past winter, a third of U.S. honeybee colonies died or disappeared in a phenomenon scientists call colony collapse disorder. More and more, the culprit is believed to be certain pesticides, fungicides, and herbicides that may be killing bees or adversely affecting brain and nerve function. In April, Europe announced a ban across the continent to prevent the use of a kind of pesticide known as neonicotinoids. Activists in the U.S. are suing the EPA to impose a similar ban. The world would be a lesser place without the honeybee. A quarter of our diet depends on their pollinating skills, but we also admire their beauty and grace. Observe. The environmental writer Bill McKibben narrates this short film, Dance of the Honeybee. Let's think about bees in a hive. They go out every day when the temperature's high enough. They're not like other farm animals. They're this weird, wonderful cross between wild and domestic. And they head out into the open world and they come back as it were with reports about that world, you know what it's like uh, miles away. Uh, so one little bee yard someplace is a kind of hub for understanding a whole huge swath of territory. Understanding whether it's being farmed well or treated as a kind of monoculture, whether it's being saturated in pesticides or whether it's producing a wide, beautiful variety of uh, flowers of all kinds there are sort of accomplices in figuring out how healthy and together uh, our landscapes really are. One of the reasons I like being out with bees is that you do sort of slow down and enter their uh, world a little bit. I, I think they're quite beautiful. I like watching, I confess, I like watching in the early spring, the first few days of bees coming back with um, pollen and just sort of looking at the pollen in their saddlebags as they return and seeing what color it is and figuring out where it must have, what tree it must have come from or whatever. And they're, and they're beautiful in that you get a sense of their indefatigability. I mean, this is an impossible task to, you know, three grains at a time produce enough honey to keep the colony alive over the winter and yet they do it, you know. Um, and there's something quite beautiful about that too. I think most beekeepers are fascinated by bees themselves. This perfect example of the idea that humans could cooperate with another species to both of their mutual benefit. Uh, we don't have very many examples of that in our uh, society, but that's what a beehive is. I mean, honeybees are like everything else on our planet <laughs> under all kinds of duress. I mean, the world in, that we jointly inhabit is changing with enormous speed. So none of the patterns that uh, any of us are used to I I exist in the same way anymore. Bees are under threat because landscapes keep changing. We get better at everything we do and take more cuttings of hay, you know, we leave less time for clover to just sit there in the field. 
life speeding up for them just like it is for us. And really neither of us are coping very well with the results of it. So, I mean, what we can do to help these is exactly the same thing we can do to help ourselves. Uh, try to slow down the pace of change in the world around us. Uh, human societies aren't going to be able to cope with rapid climate change, and neither can most animal societies, uh, bees included. Uh, human societies can't cope with turning everything into a monoculture, neither can bees. They're a remarkable reminder of the need for a certain kind of stability in terms of things like climate, and the need for a certain kind of variety in terms of landscape and, and what's around us. We need to be making, at this point in our society, some wise decisions about the years ahead. And so we need to be using uh, some of that same focused and determined decision-making that, that bees have successfully employed over a great many millennia.